According to Mrs. Markham, I was supposed to spend all day thinking up the right words. But to my surprise, I did my best work when I shut my head off. I didn't even want to think why Laura decided we'd meet at 3 o'clock in the morning, and in a restaurant we'd never gone to. I didn't know what to tell her, and something tells me she's no more ready for this meeting than I am. By nightfall, I finally stopped worrying. The right words would come when they were needed. And if they don't come at all, then so be it. I've heard said, when you're knocked out by a single blow, you don't have time to feel any pain. Well, that's a lie. It's painful as hell. Every day I spent in that coma, the pain was unbearable. Yeah, I heard about that already. But what if they decide to spill it to the papers? We need to start thinking now about covering our asses. I know people who can deal with this, but they'll need at least a week. Plus, if we want to... Lieutenant Stat, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have Jack Boyd on the line. Who? Jack Boyd, sir. He's calling from the hospital. <sighs> Gibson, I'll call you back. Don't do anything without my team. Jack, well, wow. I didn't know you were awake. Doctor said you could be in that coma for months, even years. How are you feeling? Tell me who's in control, Martin. I don't think I follow you. For God's sake, Martin, tell me it's you running the department and not some stooge from the mayor's office. Uh, yes, Jack. I am performing the duties of the police chief, but the new man's coming on Saturday, Kevin Paulson. He... Kevin Paulson? Yes, it's the guy from the... I know who Kevin Paulson is. Now listen carefully, Martin. I'm coming back to work. I'm Freeburg's police chief, and it's gonna stay that way for another four months. Now you get on the phone and do whatever needs to be done. You run into any problems, threaten them with the media, court, or blackmail. But I don't think they'll give you any trouble. The mayor knows it's easier to just wait until the winter than deal with a scandal. Oh, and assemble a press conference. Listen, Jack, I know the truth is on your side, but you have to take into account- Martin! How long since you transferred to my department? Uh, coming up on five years now. How many times in the last five years have you come to my birthday party? How many times have you come to the farm when I had the boys over? Uh, never had the pleasure, but... Never, because you couldn't care less. 
And I don't care for you either, Stat. It wasn't me who appointed you deputy, and uh, you wouldn't have been my first choice. But if you do ever come over to my house, you won't miss the big hole in my backyard. Garbage pit. You know, for old rubbish. A smelly hole filled with rotten furniture and other crap. So, Stet, if I even for a moment doubt your devotion, you'll go straight into that pile of trash. Maybe you'll get to catch up with some old friends. You remember Kendrick, don't you? I'll schedule the press conference for tomorrow, all right, Jack? The day after tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going shopping. No, that would be too much. Wow, Jack, what's with the outfit? You planning on- The pit in the backyard, Martin. Always remember about the pit in the backyard. Don't talk to anyone before the press conference starts. I'll try to get you on stage quickly. Kevin Paulson is here. He wanted to- Jack! I hardly recognize you. That's quite an image for a man like you. An old dog with a new trick, right? We should see each other more often. How long has it been? Last time I saw you, I fired you, Kevin. Ha! <laughs> You mean the day I resigned in protest over the corruption and lawlessness at your police department, right? Yeah, repeat that shit often enough, someday you might start believing it. You know, Jack, I'm glad that everything turned out so well. Unlike you, I've made good use of the past seven years. My new construction company keeps getting jobs from the city, and we're doing really well. I have a new house, new hobbies, even a new wife. Maybe you've met her. Shelly Rogers. Oh, Shelly Rogers. So you really are in bed with the mayor. <laughs> it's a dream come true. All my dreams have come true. Only one thing remains. To bring order to the Freeburg Police Department. <laughs> you being serious, Kevin? I'm serious as ever, Jack. I'm the most serious man you know. It's not often you see the past and the future of Freeburg Police Chiefs at the same press conference. <laughs> I hope you have time to talk, Kevin. There's something we need to discuss. Jack, the reporters are waiting for you. My retirement plan somehow just got turned into a circus. Fortunately, I'm pretty good at swallowing swords and jumping through burning hoops. They all seem to like it.
9-11 in progress. I don't love it. Progress. Officer on scene. Looks like we have a situation here. Four twelve.
Impressive recovery, Mr. Boyd. I'm still not happy about how soon you're back to work. Well, not happy as your doctor. As a resident of Freiburg, I'm immensely grateful for it. Really? <laughs> Just don't tell anyone, or they'll pull my license. Well, thank you again for coming to see me at night. Oh, well, whatever you need, Mr. Boyd. Any doctor in this town would come running any hour, day or night, you can believe me. You're not suffering from headaches. It says here that you are taking painkillers after a back injury. But the prescribed dose is enough to us. Dr. Krachinsky, you trust me? And, uh, sorry? Do you trust me? In what way, Mr. Boyd? You think I'm an honest and reasonable man, Doctor? You're joking, Mr. Boyd. Thanks to you, my wife finally agreed to buy a house here, and we've decided to have children. Thanks to you, I'm not afraid to visit my patients at night. I think you are the most honest and reasonable person in the city, Mr. Boyd. Great. You see, Dr. Krachinsky, uh, I'm an addict. Mr. Boyd, is... Uh, is well, not a drug addict in the way you might imagine. I'm not some weak-willed junkie. Sometimes I stay clean so long that the tablets stay locked in the barn so long they go past the expiration date. But there are less pleasant stories. You know what? Let's... I once took a whole bottle right there in the barn. Passed out in my own vomit. I almost choked. I fought the convulsions. Somehow managed to break four ribs. For two weeks, my chest was so sore, I wanted to die. But for those two weeks, I kept swallowing pills. Couldn't stop. If you want, I could... I once took a dose right before a party at home. My wife, Laura, had some old friends over from college. And I didn't take that many, maybe five or six pills, but it felt like I'd taken a few hundred. I passed out while I was carrying a tray of drinks. On the way down, I knocked over a set of Laura's scented candles. The house almost burned down. The repairs took a good chunk from our savings. Mr. Boyd, if you'll allow me, I just... Uh... As you can see, Doctor, I'm well aware of the seriousness of the situation and the possible consequences. But sometimes I need the pills. I don't use the word lightly. Sometimes I've got to work on cases with more energy than I've got. I can't do it without them. And I know you want me doing my job. So tomorrow I want you to come here and bring me some tablets. Lots of tablets. Ten bottles. No, better fifteen. 
Yeah, 15 bottles. The next three months are going to be extremely difficult, Doc. I would like to discuss your... Uh... You'll bring the pills, Doctor? Uh, yes, Mr. Boyd. Yes. Very good. Look, I don't want to trouble you any further. I bet your family doesn't like you running away with me at night. I bet they'd rather I was still in that coma. 